Welcome to Pharma Drama, the channel where we look at the science of healthcare and healthcare products. In this science nugget, I'm going to explain the concept of stereolithographic or SLA printing and show you how you can print your own medicines. All you need to do is get yourself a drink and to be fair, a 3D printer would help and then we can make a start. Let's start with the basics. What is SLA printing and how does it work? Like all 3D printers, an SLA printer takes a feedstock material, in this case a liquid resin, which contains monomer molecules and solidifies it into the object you want to print. It does this with a laser. The energy from the laser excites electrons in the monomer molecules and causes adjacent molecules to fuse together. This process is called photocuring. The resin is a liquid and is held in a clear tank in the printer into which a build plate is lowered. The laser beam is focused into the tank from underneath and photocuring occurs at the focal point of the laser, which is at the surface of the build plate. To build an object, the laser is moved in an XY raster pattern across the tank, which will create one layer of the object being printed. When the first layer is finished, the build plate moves up and the second layer is printed. This process repeats, building the object in a layer by layer fashion until the object is finished. Unusually for a 3D printer, because a liquid resin is used, the object is printed on the underside of the build plate. Before we look at the process of printing an object, I should point out some things to consider when printing medicines with an SLA printer. The first is that the basic principle on which the printer operates is photochemistry. In other words, the laser needs to supply exactly the right amount of energy to excite the electrons in the resin monomers to make them chemically react. Different monomers will require different amounts of energy. If you have an expensive printer, then the wavelength of the laser light can be tuned to provide exactly the right amount of energy to cause photocuring. If, like us, you have a cheaper printer, then it will have a laser of fixed wavelength. That means the energy provided by the laser might not be exactly what is needed to cause photocuring. What can be done about that? I hear you ask. And the answer is, you need to add a photo initiator to the resin. A photo initiator is a molecule that absorbs energy from the laser because its electrons get excited. But when those electrons relax, they release a different amount of energy. In other words, the photo initiator changes the energy provided by the laser. And in this way can be used to tune the energy input to that needed to cause photo curing. There are many photo initiators available and you can read about some of the ones we've tried in our papers, links below. A second issue is that you can tune the mechanical properties of the printed object, how hard or soft it is essentially, by adding molecules that cannot cross-link to the resin. We typically print with a molecule called PEG-DA. That stands for polyethylene glycol diacrylate. That is a polyethylene glycol chain with acrylate groups at each end. It is the acrylate groups that photo cure to bind together. If polyethylene glycol is added to the resin, because there are no acrylate groups, they cannot chemically crosslink. Thus, adding a simple peg dilutes the resin, making the final object softer. We tune the mechanical properties of printed medicines in this way. It is also possible to add other diluents, such as water or other polymers. We also have to think about the drug substance being encapsulated. It is very unlikely that the drug substance will photo cure with the resin, but if it does, that's a problem. For one thing, it changes the chemical formula of the drug, so any regulatory body would consider it a different chemical entity. And for another, it will not release from the product in the body as it is chemically bound. Thus, we want the drug substance to be trapped between the cross-linked resin molecules but to be released when the product swells in water. 
The drug can exist either as discrete molecules or as particles, but obviously drug release will be faster as a molecular dispersion. You can also increase the rate of drug release by adding a diluent to the resin, as I just discussed, because this will decrease the number of chemical crosslinks, making a more porous structure. Right, let's look now at how we can actually print our own medicines. Firstly, like with all 3D printed products, we have to design the object we want to print in CAD software. I won't discuss how to do that here. I shall assume you have an object already designed. The object is imported from the CAD software into the printer's driving software. Several objects can be printed at the same time. They just need to be able to fit onto the printer's build plate. Once imported, the object can be moved on the build plate, resized and placed into different orientations. Sizing is one of the ways we control the dose of a printed medicine. Obviously, the concentration of drug in the resin is fixed. So by increasing the size of the object, we increase the dose. Orientation is also important. Some printers, including our own, print faster in the horizontal direction than the vertical direction. Thus, it is significantly quicker to print an object when oriented horizontally than vertically. However, faster printing usually means lower resolution. So if you want to print something with the best resolution, it needs to be oriented vertically. This will take longer to print, but the final object will look better. Depending on the shape of the object, you may be able to arrange more objects on the build plate in the vertical direction. Also to be considered are rafts and supports. Rafts are structures printed under the object that enable easy removal from the build plate. I think you might imagine that if you have an object with a large surface area on the build plate, very likely if the object is oriented horizontally, it might be attached very strongly after printing and so be difficult to remove. The raft is a sacrificial layer with fewer points of contact, so removal should be easier. Supports do as their name suggests and support an object during printing. This is especially important for thin or long objects that might otherwise move during printing. The printer software usually designs supports automatically based on the shape of your object. Once you are happy with the number, orientation and raft supports of your objects, printing can be started. The resin mixture with drug is placed in the tank and the build plate is loaded into the printer. The printer then starts to build the object by moving the laser in a raster pattern across the resin tank in a layer by layer fashion as I described earlier. The cover for the printer is orange to stop ambient light from photo curing the resin and to stop laser light escaping from the printer. The printer shows the number of layers needed to build the complete object as well as the number of the current layer being printed so you know how long printing will take. Once printing is finished, the build plate rises out of the resin, ready for the object to be removed. The object can be detached from the build plate with pliers. This is where the raft is important, as it makes removal much easier. Each object is detached from the build plate and must then be cleaned. The raft and any other supports are detached, either with a knife or by snapping off, and the objects must be washed to remove any uncured resins. This is because most photo curable resins are relatively toxic to the human body. So we want to make sure there aren't any left in the printed medicine. The washing is done by placing the printed objects in isopropanol. The length of time is dependent on your individual product, but it may take minutes to hours. To facilitate cleaning, the beaker may be placed in an ultrasonic bath or a shaker. Finally, and again depending on what you are printing, the objects can be post-cured, placed in a UV oven for a period of time to fully cure the resin. And that, dear viewer, is how you can print your own medicine with an SLA printer. I hope you found that description useful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing, as that really helps the channel. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.